cancer or the alignment for better distances? Denise Doherty, videographer, uh, TV producer uh, for voter education. Thank you for living. Oh, okay. Sure. Let's see. Good afternoon. Cancer board. Department of the Environment to give you a site that you can accomplish the presentation today. Richard, uh, I live in the Susan Bryan, I'm a videographer and a treasurer of Alliance for Better District 6. I live across the, the, the street. Hi, Eric Tao, a uh, local downstream. housing developer, will be presenting tonight. I'm Brian Baker, also uh, with the uh, same development, AGI. On our okay. Uh, Norman Rodriguez uh, from Yes and Pro Q will be presenting on Yes.
and we've been here for decades just like many of you here. We don't like to go in and assume we know what we can build and we build what we want without getting uh, community input. And so everyone loves the Venn diagram. We believe that when all three come together, that's where we like to find our project, project that works. Uh, really quick now on the site where our project is at. Uh, 1270 okay. 1270 Mission, it's on Mission in between 9th Street and 8th Street. It actually abuts uh, a small alley called Lasky. Um, currently, what's on the site is a 1,000 square foot, one story pizza, uh, sell by the Slice Pizza Shop, and then about a 16,000 square foot parking lot. Um, right now, it's just the, the owner uh, leases out parking to people who need daily parking spaces. So we would not be removing any current large uh, structures or any current active housing. It's uh, simply a parking lot. Um, this is a, a pretty convoluted slide, but it's important to our development. This shows uh, all the various heights that are currently allowed on the parcels all around our site. If you look closely, and it's hard to see, I apologize, it might not be the most clear. Our site is currently zoned for 120 feet in height. Right next to our site is a 200 foot site, uh, and that right now is the AVA building. If you're familiar with the dancing pianos on 9th Street, that's the building right adjacent to our building. And right next door is 150 feet in height. A block away is 320 feet tall, which is NEMA. Um, that you might be familiar. So what's interesting is we're, we're kind of located in a site where there are a lot of taller buildings or taller uh, lots right around us. And I'll get to why that's important in a couple minutes. So over the last year and a half, we've met with many community groups like yourself, um, including the CMCPD, uh, the Anian House, um, the, the Mayor's Office, Planning Office, Supervisor Kim's, office, we've met with SOMCAN, Veterans Equity Center, United Players, uh, and many of the neighborhood uh, and, and owners of buildings around our site. So we've been uh, meeting with community groups like yourself for the last, I would say, almost 18 months. So this is a, a, a rough rendering from about two years ago now. We started with a design for a building that would fit within the height of 120 feet and would fit with code. And that's roughly what our building would look like. Behind us in that rendering is the Dancing Piano Building, AVA. And early on in the beginning of 2015, we were approached by the Mayor's Office of Housing. Um, and they requested that we consider ways of increasing the amount of affordable housing units on this site. And they came to us and proposed, because as you recall that cluttered map, our site is 120 feet, but we're surrounded by 200 to 300 foot site buildings. They proposed, what if we supported you in a taller building, if you could provide more on-site affordable housing? And we said, you know what, we will consider it. We will look at what that design would be, and we will start talking to neighborhood groups and see if they would be interested. So we went from there to a taller building version of the building. So you can see from the rough renderings, the top two are the 120 foot tall, the bottom two are the 200 foot tall version of the building. And so early in 2015, mid 2015, we seemed to get support from community groups and, uh, and the mayor's office to consider moving forward with a taller version. And so that's where we've gone. In addition, we wanted to look at what does our building look like? Is it going to be a, a glass house? Is it going to be um, well, what's the style of the architecture? And so first we looked at what's surrounding us. What, what, what are the buildings that are nearby? And we looked at various different buildings that are within a couple blocks of us. And one that we really liked was actually our next door neighbor. And it's on the bottom row, the second one from the left, the red brick building known as the Potter Hotel. Um, and the reason we liked it is it had more of an old classic San Francisco feel. In talking to many of the groups within a few blocks of this area, they loved that building too and wanted to see something more in line with that. So we continued to study more classic 
older San Francisco architecture style, 75, 100 years old type buildings that many people love today. And what we found was many of these buildings have a base, a tall middle, often brick or some elaborate stone, and then a crown or a top that kind of mimics the base. And we used that as our template along with our neighbor at the Potter Hotel to come up with more detailed renderings. So about a year ago, we had designs for both a shorter building, and as you can see, our 120-foot building attempts to emulate the brick nature of the Potter Hotel at the corner and go up from there. So it almost looks as if it's an extension of that building at the corner, which is a historical landmark building. Um, and it, as you can see from a look from about 5th Street down Mission and looking at all the various buildings, you can see that our 120-foot tall building is much shorter than the 240-foot Trinity. And you can point it out, it's kind of hard to define. Sure. So our building is the one right underneath Lima, the red and white. And as you go up Mission Street towards 5th, you've got the Trinity buildings at 240, Soma Grand at 240, the Federal Building that I believe is 240 as well. Lima in the background is 320 feet tall. So we did the same thing for the increased affordable building, which is 200 feet tall, about the same height as its neighbor, Ava. And if you look in the context of that same view, still shorter than many of our neighbors within a block away. So from there, we started talking to neighborhood groups about affordability in general. Um, increased EMR units. What does that mean? How many units can we get on the site and still be able to build something that would make CalPERS the returns it needs in order to build something? And so in talking to neighborhood groups, we asked, do you want to see a lot of units? Do you want to see units that are more affordable to people making middle to lower incomes? Or do you want to see 150 AMI to people making 125,000 considered affordable units? So we had those conversations over, I would say, four or five months, and came up with this chart. Now, what this chart shows is the first option is the base, the shorter building. With the shorter building, we aren't fitting in upzoning. Code required us to build only 24 or 12% at that time. It would be 13.5% now, but only 24 total units of our 200 units would be affordable and it would only be affordable for 55% AMI. So the next five options were all options we said to the community groups, these options all make us the same amount of money. We What's yeah. AMI. I'm sorry. Adjusted median income. So affordable units are determined if you make under the threshold of the adjusted median income. So someone making 55% of what's adjusted median income in this area would qualify for those blue units. The different colors, uh, the, the green signifies someone at 90% of AMI, the red is someone at 70% of AMI, the purple is someone at 120% of AMI, and the blues are 150% of AMI. I thought I might interject a little bit. So sure. median income is half the people, 100% median income, Half the people in San Francisco make less than 100% AMI. Half the people in San Francisco make more than 100% AMI. So that's the median income. Okay. So Do we know what is the median income? Yeah. Median income is roughly 55,000 yeah. for a household of two. Yeah. So it's not average. The median is half and half. Um, the low market rate mean market rate is about 180 percent to 200 percent. They, they have in today's paper actually a, a scale similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in today's Little Examiner, so you have a copy of And if you go to the, the San Francisco Planning Department, you can actually get the official charts of, if you're a household of two, what does that mean, income-wise, three, four, and then 855, 60, 70, 80. There's a, there's a nice chart that shows, uh, so you can see who would qualify for these various units. So what we, what we found is when we talked to community groups, um, we would get questions such as, can you do 33% affordable? Can you do 40% affordable? I hear the Giants are doing 40% affordable. I hear uh, Mission Rock or 5M might be doing 33% affordable. So we said, yes, we can, and we can show you